talking today to Lola Shanayan, who is the author of The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives. Lola, tell, tell us about the plot of the book. Um, well, the novel is set in Ibadan, and um, it's about a polygamous family. And the man, the gentleman, um, the husband of the house, he's got three wives, and then he decides to take on a fourth. And she also happens to be a university graduate, which is unusual, but not unheard of. And um, after they've been married for two years, he starts to wonder why, you know, she's not pregnant. You know, he's got all these kids already. Why hasn't she given him one? So he then decides, after being um, getting some advice from his mentor, teacher, to um, go and go to a hospital and have some investigation, you know, done and... Um, of the wife? Yes, of, it... of the wife, but, uh, but it turns... Um, well, what happens after that? It un that unravels a long thread, I, doesn't I, it? I tell you, it does, and um, it's, it, it, it just kind of threatens to, to completely um, wreck this home. And the previous three wives are really very hostile to the graduate, aren't they? Because they see her as a kind of interloper who is, in a sense, taking away their privileges. They do see it that way, but of course that's just the nature of a polygamous family, where there's a lot of um, competitiveness. Um, everybody's vying for the husband's affections. Therefore, the, these what, three wives who have never had you know, any kind of education, they feel that this university graduate kind of has a certain sophistication. That, that they don't have and therefore might win the man over completely or cause the man, the husband, to abandon them. So because of this, they are indeed very hostile. And two of them are so particularly hostile that they take upon themselves to use witchcraft to, to, in a sense, put um, the final kibosh on her <laughs> relationship with him. This witchcraft, is, is this, how, how was this regarded? here in Nigeria? Um, well, it's, it's uh, widely practiced because especially amongst um, the uneducated, but, but that would be too much of a gen generalization because mm. a lot of educated people do believe in the power of, um, I don't want to call it witchcraft, but um, what's often um, referred to as juju. Yes. You know? And um, it's even when people are Christians or Muslims, they still think, look, got to go that way as well just to make sure we've got everything covered. So, so there's, a set, of, there's a set of layers of belief really aren't there really? Yes, absolutely. And, and you can have all those beliefs alongside each other really? They, they, they go along um, harmoniously. The book is also unusual in that it, it slowly unravels the, as the title says, the secret lives. It goes back into the damage that some of the women involved have had. In their, in their previous lives. Unusually, one of the women actually is attracted to another woman. Is that a, uh, something that is discussed or thought about in Nigeria, or is this uh, something that is quite unusual? Well, this is the word. It's uh, the word that you've chosen, unusual. I mean, is it unusual? Is it not a human phenomenon? I mean, why would, um, why would it be unusual? I mean, in spite, I mean, I know this, perhaps you know this, of course, but there are many who like to, to describe homosexuality as un-African, which mm. is absolutely ridiculous. And the fact that there's so many people saying this, and of course their basis is Christianity or Islam or, you know, whatever these um, holy books um, say, that's the basis mm. of their, the, their, their or, or, of them just not wanting to go near it at all mm. and if you're not even going to talk about something it's going to be very difficult for you to um, to to understand it and that's what really worries me about um, about Nigerian sometimes about Africans the fact that so, you know sometimes we can be a little bit rigid mm. in our beliefs and um, not and, and therefore you know sometimes the, that rigidity will cause uh, considerable damage mm. to other people involved but of course that doesn't matter yeah. because of course if they've got Jesus behind them yes you know nothing else matters and the reason that the graduate chooses to marry 
uh, Baba Segi is, is in a sense, in things that have happened in her personal life and her relationship with her mother. Yes. And uh, again, without spoiling the book, something has happened to her which she won't talk about. Is, is, is that, again, is that typical or is that um, unusual? Well, um, well, what happened to her? Of course, she was um, horribly um, and very violently abused and yeah. sexually. And um, it's and she went into depression mm. um, about sexual violence to, to young girls, to women in, in Nigeria and in Africa. Of course, it's it's rife. It, it mm. happens all the time. Mm. And what's worse, um, there's nobody to tell. Yeah. It's very difficult. And this is where religion also plays, you know, another part because you you automatically feel that it's a failing on your part. Um, and therefore it makes it very difficult to go mm. and tell anybody. You take it on yourself you rather than... Tell the police. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I, I know instances where people have actually gone to report a case only for the police to to turn on them. Mm. So unfortunately, young women don't have much protection mm. um, from sexual abuse. And a lot of it also goes on in the family. Of course, this isn't particular to Nigeria or Africa. Mm. I mean, it happens all over the world. Mm. But the difference is that sometimes there are just no consequences mm. um, for the perpetrators. Yeah, for um, the abuser in that yeah, instance. Yeah. Abusers. We've talked about some very serious subjects. Actually, the book is, is very funny. The, the final downfall of Baba Sege is, is, a, is a finely crafted comic moment, really. Is, is the book meant to be funny as well as serious? Um, well, I, I did want to talk about some very serious issues which mm. were important to me as an individual and um, things which I thought ought to be important to a lot of you know, Nigerian women, especially mm. African women. Um, but I know my friends tell me, uh, my friends who read the book say mm. to me, oh Lola, it's just like sitting and, you know, listening to mm. you talk. When I read it, that was mm. the feeling that I got. Um, I, I guess that's to say that, you know, I can be a, a bit of a funny girl mm. when I want to be. But it's also, I, I've always admired humor mm. um, in writing. Um, I think it's a, it's a very special skill, and I think it's also a very good way to reach people. Mm. When they're laughing, they then think later, oh, hang on, yeah, that was funny, but it mm. was this other thing. So yeah. the humor's very good I mean, for drawing the reading audience in. Yeah. And then once you have them, of course, you can do what you like. So what's the next novel you're going to write? Um, something contemporary. Um, I'm trying to to capture uh, the climate of fear that I think um, we are experiencing at mm. the moment, especially in... I've lived in Abuja now for three years, I've yeah. lived and worked here, and um, it's been very interesting to me just how one's liberties uh, are taken away um, little by little. Mm. Um, Christians can no longer, are often afraid to go to church, you know? Yeah. It's and uh, people. Are, I mean, you, you hear about malls. You know, bombs going off outside malls, outside nightclubs, and it's as if there's a, a horrible force mm. um, that's just trying to take away uh, the liberty that people have enjoyed, especially people in Abuja. Abuja's been quite a liberal, mm. quite a, you know, a place nice to be. Place to, to live yeah. and to be. Lola, thanks for talking to me today. You're very welcome. Thank